Well, today I want to talk to you about lenticular rays, and I've got a couple sections cut out, about one inch by one inch. And, um, well, first of all, what is a lenticular ray? It is a, a series of lenses. Uh, the one on the left is a uh, one-dimensional lenticular array. If I hold this up here, you will see the uh, flat bottom and uh, bumpy top, which are the, actually the lenses involved in this uh, design. And the one on the right is a two-dimensional version of the same thing. And, in fact, this one is actually formed in, into a hexagonal uh, type of pattern. Well, what are lenticular arrays used for? Well, um, they're actually used for, in one sense, to magnify surfaces. For example, uh, particularly magnifying the surface of a liquid crystal display to, to identify and, and look at the pixels. Another purpose that uh, they have is, as I kind of move this around and can kind of sh show you here, is it can be used to display 3D images. And this has something to do with the fact that the lenses are repeating and it gives you the capability of being able to see uh, objects behind objects and as you move around you can either see or more or less of that same object. So uh, this is what I'd like to talk to you about today and get into some of the characteristics of these lenticular arrays. Okay, well this geometry, uh, uh, this diagram shows the geometry of the lenticular array where the lenses are varying along X and they are sitting above a surface uh, along the y direction. Um, it turns out that in order to get maximum uh, magnification, which is one of the applications of the lenticular array, the lenses have to be uh, near or slightly less than the focal length, which we'll show you why here in a, in a few seconds. Um, now taking away this diagram, let's take a look at our lenticular array. This particular one is uh, has a geometry of uh, one cylindrical lens for every one-tenth of an inch, okay, or essentially 10 per inch. We also have another one that is uh, uh, 20 per inch, which is not shown here. So th the magnification is going to exist along the x-axis, which is along the bottom here. And you can see uh, a number of striations in this image because we've got this array on a uh, lined piece of paper. So as I rotate this, you can see uh, the effects. I can actually magnify um, and by the way, the line should be linear, and you can see uh, where it looks more like a L shape or an S shape here. And uh, len at lenses, as they always are, are only linear uh, in the center of the lens. At the edges of the lenses, uh, they tend to uh, distort. So this is the reason that you don't see a straight line as I turn this to the edge. So let's turn it the other way now. And uh, well, let's continue to go that direction and see if we can focus in on just one line. Okay, so that would be this. This is showing the magnification of just one of those lines, if I can get this uh, to behave properly. Okay, so here's, after some adjustment here, here's what I wanted to show to you. Now as I rotate the camera up and down, you might see that line reappear in another lens. Two-dimensional ray um, is going to focus both in the X and Y direction, and you can see the effect of that here. Um, each time there's a black uh, image on one of the lenses indicating an, a focusing from the uh, line paper. So as I turn this, uh, I can get uh, almost like a motion blur effect here. And it, de it depends upon the relative alignment of the lenses with the, with the paper. So this, is, this gives very interesting results here. And again, um, you can either do uh, Pac-Man games here or you can do some interesting phot photography. So um, again, we are focusing in both the X and Y directions. So um, the size of this um, lenticular array at point to point in each individual um, hexagonal shaped lens is the same dimension. It's about a tenth of an inch. However, since one row of hexagonal lenses can be interspersed between, in the gap between the next row, that the spacing between two uh, consecutive rows is actually con is less than a tenth of an inch. Okay, okay. As I promised, um, we're going to show you why the lenses have to be at a focal length approximately that. 
to get maximum magnification. So I'm, to demonstrate that, I'm going to use a simple lens, and uh, I'm going to focus here on this logo, EIT 2007. By the way, this is 2011. So as I get closer to the focal point here, you see that I get the maximum magnification. Any movement beyond that reverses the image. If I can show that. Not easy to see, but you can see that the image is now reversed, which is the common trait of a magnifying glass. Dollar bill now to find a very small object, a uh, printed object, by which I can apply this uh, lens array. And I think you can see this G in a very, very small 4, which I'm going, going to move and try to stretch in the, in the uh, vertical direction. So I'm going to line up the lens such that the x-axis is pointing up. So there's the number four, and as I slip it in here, you can see the top of the four, and as I shift this down, you can see the bottom of the four. So there's your magnification there. I estimate that the magnification is actually uh, a factor of five when I did this uh, very carefully. What are lenticular arrays used for? Well, right now we're using them with liquid crystal displays, either to magnify them or to create special effects like uh, 3D effects. So let's take a look at this. On the left hand side I have a 128 by 128 uh, liquid crystal display that is used for example in a uh, cell phone. In the middle I have uh, illustrated the pixel geometry which is a stripe geometry and showing uh, the red, blue, and green uh, subpixels actually in the order that I think that it is usually you draw it as RGB. Then on the right hand side I've got a block diagram of this display. So let's take a look at some of the details then. As I zoom in here, we can see that we have a simple um, image showing uh, ECE 2500 laboratory number 3. So there's 125, uh, 128 of these pixels running this way, 128 running this way. Each of them have uh, this geometry shown in, in the center, uh, showing the individual filaments or individual subpixels in, uh, in this geometry. Let's move the di this out of the way and then we can show you some more specifics associated with this. We actually have a size for this uh, particular uh, pixel. Pixels are often called dots. And so it turns out that each dot, which would correspond to the region, um, including, not including the, the black rectangle, but just the, the, from the tips of the top of the filament to the bottom of the filament, of a size, of a rectangular size of 0.1892 by about 0.197. This is square, and I did not draw it square, I, I drew it kind of rectangular. The dot spacing is the space between uh, one filament to the filament above it, or to the left of it, and that turns out to be 0.01 uh, millimeters. And the dot pitch is then the entire size of the pixel, including the black space. And if I Im imagine that black uh, rectangle being over in the uh, laid over the entire array of uh, subpixels here, this would then fill up the entire geometry. This is a drawing showing what happens when you lay a lenticular array on top of that liquid crystal display that we were talking about. Imagine that, that the striped geometry is now turned into the page so the red, blue, green pixels, which I believe is the order that is actually done on this display, is shown as in the bottom. Now for these three lenses here, let's look at the ray tracing. This is a ray diagram showing uh, the blue ray going through the uh, lens and making an image of the pixel that's below there. The further away it is from this lens, the, the larger that image would be actually you have a lens system here that would capture that as well. In a similar manner, the uh, green ray uh, projects on the top, and the red ray not only projects through this lens to make an image here, but also is showing a, a secondary effect to the next lens. And this gives us the parallax, parallax uh, effect that is so important to, uh, in 3D to show uh, objects which are behind other objects. The center uh, lens is uh, showing just a little bit more detail, showing a traditional ray trace with uh, three lines coming out from an individual point on this blue pixel. Um, and the lens, of course, 
what it does. The purpose of that is to make that into three uh, collinear rays, which then can be captured by a lens, for example, in your eye that would focus to a similar point uh, on the retina. Having now described the geometry between the lenticular array and the LCD, and also having uh, turned off the lights here to give us a little bit better effect, let's now tr um, see if we can magnify some of these uh, pixels uh, by placing the lenticular array on top. Now, the, remember the magnification is along the x-direction, which is, is this, and as I rotate this into position, you'll see uh, eventually those familiar S-curves that uh, we saw with the lined paper. Well, this is essentially lined paper. We're following the pixel stripes, which are uh, in the vertical direction here, like this, okay? So let's go ahead and, and line these up now um, to magnify those stripes. And here they are. Okay, it's being as difficult as again as it can be. Again, we have a moiré pattern showing. So I line these up, eating up a lot of time here. There we go. Now, as I rotate, as I move the camera from the left to the right, and I don't have a perfect alignment here, um, I can see the stripes that are going up and down are the individual, individual red, blue, green, I believe that's in the order, um, that are used by this display. So this is the one-dimensional uh, lenticular array result. Now we're going to try the 2D array. And, and uh, before I go any further, I forgot to mention that since most of this field showing here is blue, um, the blue uh, filaments dominate out of the three subpixels in each, in each um, pixel, except for the white area. The white area would be a combination of red, blue, and green. So I am, as I place this object, this lenticular array here, on top of this, I'm going to get a, a way of being able to actually see the individual colors in the white area. So as I rotate the camera here, and again, it shows much better than it does on the camera, I can see individual red, followed by blue, followed by green uh, pixels in the green, in the, uh, in the white areas. The blue areas pretty much are just showing a very strong blue with subdued red, subdued green uh, pixel filaments. So this uh, concludes our discussion of lenticular arrays and shows an application how to magnify those pixels either using a one-dimensional or a two-dimensional geometry and lays the groundwork for discussing how to build a 3D 